One, two, three. One more. One more. One more. One, two, three. Thank you. Awesome. No problem. Oh, yeah, I'm, oh, you're ready, ready I'm, to go? I'm going, yeah. Right. So, whenever Sweet. you want. Awesome. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about how buggy mobile apps can allow the user bases to be tracked. So, first, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm Colby Moore, a security research engineer at Cinec. Um, I did this research with a good buddy of mine, Patrick Wardle. <laughs> Uh, he'll be presenting tomorrow uh, here at Shmoocon as well. Oh, I'm sorry, that's it. Just here at Shmoocon uh, regarding his talk on uh, iOS vulnerabilities. Um, so a little bit about Synac. Um, we do crowdsource vulnerability discovery, but with a vetted group of security researchers. Uh, we also have an internal R&D team that does just special side product projects and cool cybersecurity research like this. Um, we're back at Google and a bunch of other awesome VCs, so we're here to stay for a while. Um, anybody can sign up on our platforms and get paid to find bugs. There's no commitments and the payouts are, are really good. Um, so if you're interested in looking for bugs on the side, come talk to me after, afterward or uh, be sure to sign up. And uh, we're, we're always looking for new talent. So this talk is broken down into three parts. Um, first I'll talk about bug code that can lead to geolocation issues and common apps that have these bugs. Uh, second I'll present a case study that we performed on a popular app. Uh, the end result was the bugs we found uh, is that we were able to track the whole app's user base in real time. And then finally, um, I'm going to talk about fixes to these issues and what everyday users can do to protect themselves. So first, an overview of geolocation, some code, and some interesting bugs. So currently, integrating location awareness into mobile apps is almost the norm. About three-fourths of smartphone users make use of geolocation functionality. 84% um, of social networking apps use location information. And uh, many apps use data for nearby deals, navigation, or health and fitness tracking. Um, but before we go off hunting for bugs, it's important to know how geolocation is implemented at the code level. So on iOS, there's four basic steps to implement location awareness. To do so, first you create, create an instance of the core location manager. You set up a delegate. This is an object that will automatically be called when, ge when geolocation information is updated. And then we start collecting the geolocation information. Finally, to set, um, finally, set up the app to wait and handle um, the callbacks when location is updated. <clears throat> so all the cool kids are writing Swift these days. So here's a little Swift app we wrote out um, that shows how uh, an app can get a user's location. Um, first, an instance of location manager is created, then delegate is set, Authorization is requested, and finally, start updating location is called. When location updates received, the corresponding code is executed. Um, really, the key, the key takeaway from this piece here is, is highlighted in that box. Um, the app needs to request authorization from the user in order to get geo information. I'm sure you've all seen this pop up on your phones. Um, apps have to explicitly request access to get the info. So there's, there's two ways that apps can request authorization. The first way allows an app to access users' location information only when the app's in use. Um, in order to do so, you set the NS location when in use usage description key in info.plist, and you invoke the request when in use authorization method. The first time the app's ran, it will prompt the user to accept its permissions. The second way allows the app to use the user's location always. So this happens a lot for like navigation apps or you know, like Waze or, or uh, and such. So even when the app's closed, the app can still get your location. Um, to implement this, you set the NS location always usage description key in the input up the list and invoke the request always authorization method. Again, when users run the app, they'll be prompted to allow these permissions. So geolocation mobile apps is becoming the norm. It's cool and useful, but if the apps are buggy, they can allow that geolocation information to leak. Bottom line, this is bad for the users, but good for the bad. So you're thinking, man, I don't really care if my location's known. I'm like, you know, what does it matter to me? But think about it. 
Genome creation is a great way to figure out just about everything about you. Not to mention, criminals love knowing where you are. You know, there's been stories of criminals looking on Facebook to see when you're out of town so they can go around your house. So I think this quote here really hits home. It says, Geolocation generates a precise, comprehensive record of a person's public movements that reflects a wealth of detail about her familial, political, professional, religious, and sexual associations. So now there's some background. I'm going to talk about common classes of bugs that might reveal a user's locations and how to find such bugs. So the most common types of bugs, when you break it down, are really using insecure network comms, using overly precise geolocation information, insecure local storage, buggy service side APIs, the ability to spoof your location, as well as UI misconfigurations and validation errors. So the first is insecure network comms. If an app doesn't secure its network communication and geolocation information is transmitted, even commonly um, exit data and images uh, can have geolocation information, uh, this can allow a passive attack or someone sniffing network traffic to access the user's location, which really isn't good. Um, so apps shouldn't use plain text columns, use self-signed certs, or forget to implement certificate pinning. So we'll talk a little bit more about these. Um, the easiest way to sniff network communication for an app that's vulnerable is to either listen passively, assuming no transport layer security, or to use a proxy such as Bird. So to do so, set up a proxy and configure your mobile device to use it in its network settings. Um, and oftentimes, we see that an app's comms are done securely, but um, you might have a third-party analytics engine or something that's sending data back that isn't encrypting the data. So fortunately, iOS doesn't allow self-signed certs by default. But oddly enough, uh, we tend to see devs overriding this all the time. Um, enabling the use of self-signed certs can be done by calling a method set allows any HTTPS certificate for host. So here we have some IDA disassembly showing an app calling this method. Um, once this method is called or you observe this in disassembly, you can be pretty sure the app is vulnerable to a man in the middle attack. So we found that many apps don't use SSL pinning either. Um, but what is SSL pinning? We find that a lot of people aren't, aren't really familiar with it. Um, it's a layer of security that helps protect against rogue CAs or social engineering attacks. Basically ensures that a client will only communicate with a well-defined set of servers. Pinning basically makes it so it only talks to certain certs. Um, if an app doesn't use SSL pinning, the following scenario might allow an attacker to mount a middleware connection. So an attacker could either use a cert from a compromised CA, or more likely, social engineer a user to install an attacker generated certificate. Well, once installed, the attacker will be completely trusted at OS level, and so now the attacker can man the middle freely with no SSL validation errors. So unfortunately, we see lots of apps that store geolocation in unencrypted files as well. Um, and since users lose or have their phones stolen often, uh, this would be a pretty big deal. So for an attacker to know exactly where you live and have all the other personal information on your phone, they could really do some serious damage. Um, all an attacker would need to do is be able to boot the phone and access the file system, which generally isn't that hard. So the simplest way to determine an app, if an app is vulnerable is to run FileMon. FileMon basically shows you all the files that are modified or created when the app is ran. Next is a tool called FileDP, it stands for File Data Protection. And you can run that in any files to determine if the uh, file protection flags are set. Uh, on iOS, files are automatically decrypted to boot unless the data protection API is made. So to check, you want to look for the file NS file protection key. If it's missing or it's set to NS protection none, then local files are not secure. So on iOS, always check the application's user defaults plist as well for geolocation information. Basically, it's really the easiest way to store stuff on iOS, and it's not encrypted by the OS. So on the left, we have the item assembly of an app storing some geo info and the defaults plist. And on the right, we have the contents of the plist, so you can see how it might be stored. Um, however, it's normally easiest to just skip the disassembly and go straight to look up in the file and doing a manual examination of expensive data. One of the biggest problems we see is that services um, are vulnerable to location spoofing attacks. So basically, through various means, a malicious attacker can supply false location data to the service in order to provoke undesired consequences. Um, oftentimes, you'll see location data used in user authorization, for example, to log into some um, geofenced area or to give access to possible sensitive data based on where you are. So devs don't blindly trust location data from clients. 
and don't allow um, location to change rapidly. That could really give way to either trilateration attacks or data harvesting attacks, which we'll talk about more in a second. So there's a variety of ways to find an app allows a dispute location. If you have a jailbroken phone, you can use uh, apps from the city app store uh, called Location Picker or Location Spoofer, or use uh, a framework called Script, spelled S-S-C-R-I-B-T, to inject into the app and tweak geoparameters. However, the easiest way is just to use BERT to edit any geolocation data in transit. And while it's not a really a bug per se, devs often use much more precise location data than necessary. Um, besides the fact that it reduces battery life, if precise geolocation coordinates are leaked or accessible via another bug, um, knowing exactly where the user is is pretty nice for the attacker. So bottom line, exact coordinates are normally not needed for whatever you're doing. However, lots of apps don't specify a specific accuracy setting in the, at the app level. And kind of unfortunately, the system defaults to the highest level of accuracy. So if you don't, if you don't specify, you're going to get the highest level. And that generally falls down to the sub-centimeter level, so it's extremely accurate. So how can you determine if an app is using overly precise geo? Option one, sniff the network traffic, if traffic can look at the data flowing by. Or option two, look at the disassembly. If you see the set desired accuracy method being called, the third argument is actually the accuracy constant. And here you can see it's set to CL location accuracy best. So remember that if it's not specified, the results the best. Another common bug class that can reveal a uh, user's location is uh, insecure service ID apps. So I've seen a lot of apps that have service ID components that either one, have lots of undocumented APIs and assume nobody's going to poke around. Two, implement no rate limit at all, think data harvesting. Uh, three, allow completely anonymous queries and require no authentication whatsoever. Or four, provide lots and lots of unnecessary sensitive information that may or may not even be used by the application. So the easiest way to find such HTTP APIs is just to look at the network traffic. Um, see what endpoints the app is talking to and kind of just poke on those, give it some arbitrary data. So here we have an example, where am I API. Um, it takes a username and, and uh, gives back the user's last known location. So if you edit the network request and change the specified user, upon submit, you can, uh, the API blindly gives back another user's information. So here we found Carmen San Diego. Um, the last class of geolocation bugs I'm going to talk about deals with um, the UI of the app. So it's funny or sad, depending on how you think about it. But a lot of app developer, developers seem to assume that nobody's going to mess with the UI or poke around below the UI level. Um, so, or, or worse yet, a lot of apps just ignore the user settings preferences. So to find these bugs, sniff the network and toggle settings on the UI directly and observe the output and see if it changes. Um, check the network output and see if the user preferences are ignored. Um, a user's location might not be shared with other users, but is it still being sent to the server? The other thing to check for is to see if the UI is implementing logic that should be server-side. For example, if a user requests to share a location with only a mile of accuracy, um, is overly precise geo actually being sent, sent to the server but rounded down to a lesser precision at the UI level of other devices? Sorry, right, here's some real-world examples of where these things come up. Um, so here's actual apps that did or still do compromise their user's geolocation information. First is older versions of the Starbucks app stored a user's coordinates in an unencrypted file, session.cls log. So a phone was stolen, it provided a wealth of information about a user's daily activities to an attacker. Um, this vulnerability was reported by a guy named Daniel Wood, received a CD, and was recently patched. Next app to screw up is uh, Whisper, a secret sharing app that claims to be the safest place on the internet. And you know if they claim like that, it, it's probably not true. Um, it had a UI bug, or maybe a feature, um, even if users opted out of sharing the location, uh, the app would still report it to the backend servers. Um, so it was later found out that the information was stored indefinitely and was being shared with the DoD. Um, so the, sc the screenshot here is a poor me, where apparently Whisper is and or was quite popular. Um, I can't imagine that anyone would have any secrets, any secrets over there. Um, so next we have Tinder, uh, as you guys might be familiar, a very popular dating app. Um, a while back, they were actually providing exact coordinates uh, to all the users and sending them down. Um, and they were doing the rounding at the UI level. Um, they eventually updated, but 
um, they still provided precise relative locations. So they tell you, you know, a user is exactly a mile away. Um, so using a method trilater called trilateration, these relative distances could be used to locate users. Um, and to make matters worse, since it was integrated with Facebook, uh, there was a bug where you could query the API and determine a user's Facebook page as well. Um, so these were all publicly reported and had some time ago, but a vulnerability still exists um, where you can geolocate a user down to about a, a mile of accuracy. So this next one caught me off guard a little bit when I heard about it. Um, it turns out that Angry Birds was leaking geo information. Um, and honestly, who would think Angry Birds was keeping track of where they went? Um, ultimately, it was revealed uh, that some government agency that we're not going to name here uh, was monitoring Angry Birds traffic to collect this information. Um, it kind of just goes to show you that if an app is leaking geo, someone's going to collect it and someone's going to abuse it. So now, now's where it gets a little bit interesting. Um, I'm going to talk about an app that is vulnerable to a myriad of geolocation bugs. Um, and they cumulatively, cumulatively allowed us to track any of its users anytime, anywhere in the world. Um, so we've talked about these location vulnerabilities that occur, but what are the real world implications? Uh, we surveyed a ton of applications out there and decided that one called Grindr was going to be the ideal candidate uh, due to its ridiculously bad use of geo information. So, what is Grindr? It's the largest and most popular all male location based social network out there. More than 5 million guys in 192 countries around the world and approximately 10,000 more new users downloading the app every day. Bottom line is the app is based completely around knowing who's near you. It's extremely popular, and it caters to a demographic that has a history of being targeted. Um, so we figured it'd be a good app to take a look at from a user privacy standpoint. So to begin our assessment, we checked to see if there were any previous vulnerabilities that had been publicized or discovered, and sure enough, there was. Um, in 2012, a vulnerability was discovered that allowed impersonation of users as well as sensitive data compromise. Uh, 2013, a graduate school, graduate school paper was published uh, that revealed more concerns around user enumeration, impersonation, and, and identification. Um, in early 2014, SYNAC, we published our assessment, which was first to bring up the issue of location privacy, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then in late 2014, someone else caught on and leaked similar, similar vulnerabilities to Pastebin, and I'll talk more about that later as well. So what did the developers do wrong? Um, quite a bit. Uh, they didn't use SSL pending on the application. Um, Geo was provided with way too much precision. Location spoofing to the server was trivial. The APIs are overly permissive and don't require any authentication. And the data was filtered at the UI level. So basically everything we just talked about. The first bug we noticed was that the iOS application didn't pin its SSL certs. As I talked about earlier, it makes it much easier to pull off a man in the middle attack when this happens. So using a man in the middle proxy, we're able to take advantage of this lack of SSL pending to examine the application's protocol, and we ended up uh, reverse engineering it in order to build a custom client. Bug number two. Um, upon running the app, um, it queries the server and pulls down a series of, of uh, JSON blobs for each user nearby. Um, and each blob is all the user profile info. The problem here is that the distance field provides us with an extremely precise relative distance. This distance shown here is in kilometers, and it's down to the sub-centimeter level. So this opens up the possibility of a trilateration attack. So we reported these bugs to Grindr a while back, and they made some changes. Unfortunately, the changes have little effect. Um, looking at the disassembly of the newest uh, patch app, we can see that the location accuracy is set to 10 meters of precision. The problem with that is, A, 10 meters of precision is still enough to identify where someone lives. And B, with this setting, you're guaranteed that the result is within 10 meters of accuracy, not that it includes 10 meters of error. Um, so we found that it generally returned roughly about 3 meters of precision or so. Um, so a random error should have been introduced to Surfside. Um, the image here shows my uh, coworker Patrick testing the app uh, in his lab, and that's where we found out that the accuracy was within about 3 feet. So one of the bigger problems we saw uh, was that the API will accept arbitrary coordinates from any user. So basically, we could say that we're in Hawaii one minute and Africa, Africa the next, and you know there's no way possible we can make that distance jump that quickly. Um, literally, dozens of queries a second were possible, and there was no rate limiting or distance limiting on our changes. So that opened up the possibility of accurate and fast collaboration. So furthermore, no authentication was required to talk to the APIs. Um, none at all. And the amount of queries weren't limited. Um, it was pretty much a dream for someone wanting to scrape data. 
Uh, it became trivial and numerate users and pulled down everyone's profile info, which generally contains name, height, weight, age, relative distance, even social media links, and, uh, and photos. So Grindr has since implemented and required authentication. However, signing up for an account takes just seconds, and email, emails are not verified. So it's pretty easy to bypass. So while examining the JSON data from other users, we noticed something odd. Um, there was a key titled show distance. Uh, sometimes this key was set to false, but distances were still in the JSON data. So it turns out that it was the UI level logic deciding whether or not to display this data. Um, in short, data was still being broadcasted to everyone, just not displayed. So with a little bit of technical sadness, it wasn't hard to view it. So here you can see how the setting was implemented in the application. So we have all these seemingly minor vulnerabilities in the app, but what could, could a real-world attacker do with this data? Um, we decided to write a framework that leverages bugs to find out for ourselves. So before we go any further, I should note that the purpose of this research was not to identify Grindr users, but to help protect those that wish to remain private. Uh, but during the vulnerability research and disclosure, no individual users were intentionally or unintentionally identified, and all data logged has been irrecoverably destroyed. So based on the bugs we found, we theorized that we should be able to track any user at any given time. Um, the APIs were wide open, we had extremely precise geo, and location spoofing was really easy. So how's our framework doing? Uh, first, we needed to engineer the data gathering component, uh, the interface with the API. Based on location, we can download and parse uh, specific data from nearby users. And uh, we, uh, here we're specifically interested in the distance parameter. So now that we're able to suck down user information and determine what users are nearby, we needed a way to locate them. Uh, to do this, we gather distances, then implement a basic trail adoration algorithm. So we mentioned, mentioned trail adoration before, um, but what is it? In short, trail adoration is the method of determining an absolute location based on three or more relative distances. Um, so first we spoof our location three times around a location of interest, and query users' relative locations from each point. Um, due to the Earth being a sphere, distances are measured along the circumference, so we have to convert these distances we receive accordingly. We map them to a spherical coordinate system and before, before running any calculations. Ultimately, after a lot of math, we're able to determine user precise coordinates. So now that we have a way to determine location, what's going on on a massive scale on maps and users? Um, so here's some screenshots from our mappings early last year, um, showing the San Francisco and the Sochi Olympics. So just as a sanity check, you can see that the users all fall within the land masses and tend to be in densely populated locations. So this starts to bring up some really interesting privacy issues, um, especially for prominent figures that might be grinder users. Um, what if you're an athlete, a politician, a movie star, and you're using grinder data anonymously? Um, you might not want the meter public involved in that side of your life, um, especially if you wish your sexual preferences to remain private. Um, so it's very conceivable to think that someone could watch a specific location, such as a U.S. Capitol, and try to determine specific users' identities for malicious purposes. Um, but I'll talk a bit more about that later. So test our theory, we tracked some willing users over the time span of a week. Um, sure enough, patterns began to emerge. Um, more often than not, we observed that for each user there were dozens of data points in two different locations that occurred at distinct times during the day. Um, we confer that these were home and work locations, respectively. Um, occasionally, you would see pit stops along the way of the gym or the grocery store. Um, in the screenshots here, you can see the kind of accuracy we're getting, you know, pretty much all within the range of a house. So let's take it one step further. Um, we know we can track you, but who are you? Um, so first we have the geolocation information, which tends to be scary accurate. Combining public record sources such as home ownership databases for home locations and LinkedIn profiles for work locations, it becomes really easy to guess who works and lives in a specific area. Um, to validate our identities, um, graduate users tend to share a lot of personal information, um, including name, photos, age, height, etc. Not to mention a large percentage of users share social media links as well. So we conducted tests using this method on several billing participants that had nearly 100% success rate on identifying uh, users' actual locations um, and identities. Um, so even if you wish to remain anonymous, which a lot of grinder users do, uh, this method could still be used to reveal their identities. So we disclosed to Grindr in early 2014 and stressed the urgency of these, these bugs. Um, we even provided technical write-up POCs, but in the end they refused to fix anything. And to quote them, 
We do not view this as a security flaw, so we kept this half waiting for the fix. Um, ultimately, as with all bugs, someone else found it. An anonymous hacker posted a POC to paste bin. Uh, it was titled, Grinder fails to protect their users, and it demoed how to track users through Grinder just like this. Uh, fast forward a few days, and it turns out the Egyptian officials began using this leak bug to track down and arrest game in Egypt since it's illegal to be there. Um, so we see a lot of security bugs every day, um, but sometimes it's hard to imagine that there's a real world impact. Um, and see something like this really drives home why these geolocation bugs are so serious. So after the bad press, Grindr decided to try their hand at a fix. Um, user settings for sharing location data within the app are now respected. Uh, geofencing was implemented in Egypt to prevent uh, people from sharing their location there. Um, and they set the GPS accuracy to the nearest 10 meters. But the SSL pinning issue still needs to be fixed, and the APIs, APIs employ almost zero security, still no rate limiting, and thus spoofing locations is still possible. Um, the end result is that you can still track users and with decent accuracy reveal their identities. So all right, so as a location aware app developer, what can you do to not fall into this trap? Um, and for users, what can you do to protect yourself from the apps? Users assume that you can be tracked, accept there's a risk, and act accordingly. Um, if you're really paranoid, you can drill down into your location preferences at the OS level and turn off location sharing for all your apps or just this app in particular. Um, developers, you need to implement secure columns properly, ping your SSL certs, um, have auth in your APIs, implement correct UI logic, use secure local storage, and don't use overly precise geo coordinates. So that's it. Um, thanks for coming out. Um, feel free to ask me any questions. Slides are online at the URL. They're available right now. Um, questions, comments? Did you contact certs after your finds? Um, I believe someone from our uh, internal disclosure team did. Um, I do not know the result of that. And apparently it didn't turn out well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you said something which, uh, if you don't mind putting on error on something you said, do you mind? Sure, no, go for it. Okay. You said that anybody can join Sunlink. And I've gone to your site many times, but you ask to fill out the CV and all this crazy stuff, and I've talked to researchers, and they get denied and they're really good. So what's up with that, dude? Um, so we have a series of assessments that you need to pass to join the research team. And uh, I can talk to our internal uh, our internal vetting team, but they kind of make the, the executive decision of who joins or who doesn't, but anyone's welcome to apply. I think a platform where anyone is welcome is best, but well, that's just me. I really like your talk. Thank oh, you. Thank you, yeah. No, and there's certainly groups out there like that, so, you know, I'd be happy to chat with you more after. Okay. Any yeah. questions? Uh, the location-based, uh, you know, services turned off. Mm -hmm. How accurate is the IP-based location? IP-based geolocation? You know, I don't know specifically. I've seen fairly good accuracy and fairly bad accuracy. Um, you know, you can be executing through a proxy or through someone else's network and you can be, be very far off. Um, I don't think anyone's going to be actually geolocating you with the IP base location. Oh, really? Like, you know, on the mobile phone, I'm talking about the mobile phone. Does it send the IP? Uh, so, so I believe that um, that only locates until kind of like the exit node from your, uh, your ISP. So if you're on AT&T, it's going to kind of show the location of the AT&T headquarters where your connection is going to come up to So on a phone, the IP based geolocation shouldn't reveal your location. Well, it depends if, if your phone is connected to the Wi-Fi. Of course. Know, if you're sitting in Starbucks and you're using Starbucks oh. Wi-Fi, that's pretty accurate. Very true. Sorry, can you say that again about why you're going to do Yeah, yeah, so, so there's a couple different ways to do geolocation within with a phone. Um, generally, with iOS, it uses kind of what they call an assisted GPS, where it uses both your GPS data um, coming down from satellites, as well as it looks for what Wi-Fi access points are nearby. And based on Wi-Fi surveys, it can tell pretty much precisely where you are. Um, another way to do it is to look at the list of known IP addresses and who owns those IP addresses and, and where they emanate from. Um, so if your phone is on, on a network that's using IPs owned by AT&T, they can trace those IPs back to you know, AT&T's headquarters and say, hey, your phone left through their, through their network. Um, so that's generally much less accurate than a GPS-based or a GPS-based approach. Um, so it's it sounds good, but it's very hard to implement in terms of if you need to update the certificate. Um, 
it's very true. And, and I don't necessarily have any great suggestions for you, but it's certainly something to be aware of and like a good thing to implement if you can. Could you describe again what makes an app particularly good about uh, protecting its location scooping or? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so with regards to location scooping, um, I think the, the biggest thing that you could do is, is rate limit. You know, it, you, you know you're not going to be moving from the U.S. to Africa in you know one second, or you know maybe you get off an airplane from the U.S. to Africa, and they give you one chance to to jump that car, but every other chance should be incremental. So you know the fact that the reason we were so successful here is that we were able to send thousands and thousands and thousands of queries to a server per second, and just scrape massive and massive amounts of data, you know, gigabytes of data, um, to process these things. So if you were to just rate limit traffic, you wouldn't be nearly as vulnerable to these things, or at least the mass scraping. Uh, more targeted attacks, you could still pull off. Cool, no problem. So, did you use scooping when you try to do the, the true light collaboration of a different person? You would say, oh, right now I'm here, I have one kilometer away from this person, and then you scoop your location and say, oh, right now I'm here, how far away am I from this person? Yeah, exactly. So um, we would, you know, I, I just said I picked the same percentage for Charlie. So I had three points around the city um, and said, okay, so I'm here, gather relative distances for all the users in the city from this point, you know, and that's like 15,000 users. So do that there, hop over this point, do it here and over here, and then using those three relative distance points, we're able to calculate the, the actual positions. Yes. So when you said they had a geolocation in Egypt, was that meaning if you were within Egypt, they had different like settings on what the app would do, or? Yeah, yeah. So, so they're. I mean, you're talking about the patch that they implemented, right? Yeah. So uh, basically, I think Grinder's pretty much ruined in Egypt. Uh, basically, it doesn't share any location information now at all, um, just because of this issue. So I think you can still network and still chat for maybe people who are sort of nearby, but it's not going to tell you relative distances. And I believe they're rolling that out in, in all countries where it's illegal to be gay. Um, and I think they're working towards that. Was there anyone notable that got burned by this? Um, not that I know of. Um, very conceivably, uh, yes. <laughs> but I don't think publicly anyone has been. So we'll kind of secretly push out the 